shall not fear. The Lord shall rise against me. In this will I become. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. Then I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. And to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire. be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, you may visit with the family until the one o'clock hour. God bless you.
service today. God, I pray that you would get the glory today. You would get the honor. For it's in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and give God. There's room in the back. You can see it. Amen. The screen in the back, if you would like to go in the back. If not, you may remain where you are. I would like for everybody at this time to stand on your feet. This obituary, a loving wife, mother, sister, daughter, and friend to everyone. Successful, intelligent, visionary. Uh, to know Tasha was to love her. But listen to this: her grand opening when she came into this world, April 4, 1990. And guess what? She was promoted in heaven, January 1st, 2023. What a promotion! What a promotion! Let me tell you, let me tell you, I know we have heavy hearts today, but let me tell you, it ain't over until God says it's over. Let me tell you why, because the saints of God, we have a hope in Jesus Christ. I said we have a hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, and the Bible said, blessed are the dead that dies in the Lord. And this sister dies in the Lord. So we ought to thank God for her promotion in heaven. Amen. We come to celebrate today. We come to celebrate this life of this dear daughter. Amen. To her husband. Amen. To her children and to her family. Amen. A sister. Amen. To her father. To certainly to our bishop, Talon Hunter and Lady Juanita Hunter. To to our cousins, to our friends today, to all of you, amen. Just know that we're praying for you today, during this time. Earth has no sorrow, and heaven cannot heal. And just know that God will help you, not just today, but in days to come. Amen, God will help you. So let's celebrate her life today, such a beautiful life. You know, a lot of folk have lived a long time, 80 and 90 years, and they still haven't done what this sister has done in the short time that she's been here. Y'all not talking to me. I said, there are many folks that have been a long life if you have not accomplished what this sister has accomplished. Which lets me know that the hand of the Lord was on this sister. I said, the hand of the Lord was on her life. Her contributions to this world. Amen. So we thank God for all my ministers today. Amen. To uh, our eulogists today, and the Elder Bobby Agnew, and to all the ministers, the bishops, and all the ministers of the gospel, we certainly greet you in the marvelous name of Jesus today. Amen. At this time, our choir is coming with the musical selection. Amen. Um, Old Testament reading will come from Elder Denise Hughes. New Testament reading will come from Deacon Burley Levant. Prayer of Comfort will come by Deacon Eric McNair.
we are going to continue in prayer. I will be reading from Psalms 27, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I
God, we just bless you at this time. This candy is hurting, is coming with a solo followed by acknowledgments from the Secretary, Secretary Darby.
when the sun rises, it will be a new sun and a new sky, shining on you and lighting the way to new paths you've never taken before. Brighter times are ahead, count on it. With love, Elder Bobby and First Lady, uh, First Lady uh, Norma, Norma Agnew. Forgive me. The church resolution to the family, the pastor, Elder L. Bernard Florence, the deacon board, missionary ministry, associate ministers, and the members of St. Thomas Chapel Pentecostal Holiness Church extend our sympathies to our pastor emeritus Bishop Tyrone and elect Lady Juanita Hunter and the plethora of other family members who are also members of this church on the transition of our fellow member, Sister Natasha Yvette Jones Walker, on January 1st, 2023. We also extend special condolences to her husband, Brother Jesse Walker. Natasha touched lives as a mother, wife, sister, granddaughter, niece, aunt, cousin, and friend. She started out early with the Lord. She sang in the children's choir, and she was a member of the usher board. In her later years, she joined the Praise Dancers Ministry, where she continued her love for music and dance. We encourage the family to hold fast to the Word of God to sustain you during these difficult days. The Word of God assures us of victory over death. The word challenges the authority of death in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57. O death, where, are, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For we make the Lord our habitation, we are victorious over death. And we have a place with the Lord, for he assures us that in his house are many mansions. And he goes to prepare that place for us, that he might receive us unto him. Be it resolved, may she rest in the peace of the Lord's presence. We shall continue to hold the family in prayer. In deepest sympathy, Elder L. Bernard Florence, a pastor, Deacon Burley LeVette, Jr., Chairman, Dolby L. Lane, Church Secretary. Okay, Y'all will bear with me for one moment here. This comes from headquarters. It says to Bishop Tyrone Hunter and family of the late Natasha Yvette Jones Walker. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. Your Christ temple family was deeply sorrowed to hear of the loss of your beloved Natasha. We extend our condolences and prayers to you and the family during this time of bereavement. We know that at these times, we know that at these times, it may be difficult for you to see the hard work of God. But we encourage you all to rest assured that God is still there for you and will help you. He promised that he would not put more on us than we can bear. He also promised that he would not leave us nor forsake us in every troubled time that we encounter. He promised to work with us even to the end of the world. We acknowledge all the work of God's almighty hand and prayerfully encourage the families to be strong and know that he is God and he is able to sustain you. Your Natasha is no longer present here on earth, but the word of God assures us that it is far better to be absent from the flesh so that we can be present with God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye lifted up. Everlasting doors for the King of glory has come in. Yours in prayer, Bishop Dr. Wilbert G. Preston and the family, and the Christ Temple family. It says, those who we 
love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. To the family of Mrs. Natasha Yvette Jones Walker, God be with you in your sorrow. She is not lost forever, but just for a while. You'll meet her again and experience that smile. May friends comfort you, faith uphold you, loving memories heal your heart. With sympathy, the Lord is now unto all them that call upon him, Psalms 145 and 18. And this comes from interim pastor, minister Bernard Jones, and the Galilee Greater International Pentecostal Holiness Church family. Acknowledgements. The family acknowledges the many kind and beautiful expressions of sympathy and love shown during our time of bereavement. May God bless each of you and keep you in his loving care. We sincerely thank you with love, Natasha's family and friends. May God continue to bless and keep the family. We love you all and we should deeply hold you in prayer. We love you.
Aunt Rita, who we always call our aunts on each other's side, aunt or uncle, because um, everybody was family. One day Tasha called me and she was like, Ace doll? And I was like, what is an Ace doll? She was like, girl, I just got off the phone with my Aunt Rita. And she was like, her Ace dolls was over there. And she was like, what kind of dolls? She was like, Aunt Rita was like, that's a good friend that would do anything for you at any time, at any moment. And I was like, oh, well, I like that. And so um, I looked up the word Ace when used as an adjective. It means very good. And we all know dolls is a best friend. And so even though I'm not Chloe, which is her best friend, I could never take her place. I'm not her sister, that's only designed for Kiana. But I will always and forever. Yes. I'm gonna say this. Um, <laughs> putting together everything. Everybody knows Tasha loves music. And to be able to pull all her favorite singers in one place. And they all changed a lot of their schedules to be here for her because they knew how much she meant to them. And I just want to thank you, Bob, Candy, um, Gal, all of you trees for coming today. That means a lot to us. Everybody knows I'm not one to get up in front of a big crowd, but for Tasha, I do anything. Um, met her in high school, and we've been close ever since then. And she became my kid's godparents.
from the moment I found out, literally, my mom woke me up out of my sleep and was crying. And God dropped one scripture in my head, and I didn't know what the scripture was, but I knew where to find it. But it really took me a week to find the strength to read it, because I, I, I didn't know. Um, but it was 2 Kings chapter 4, and it's verses 1 through 7. I encourage you to read it when you get home. I'm not reading it. <laughs> uh, the Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. But uh, to summarize it, there was a woman in the scripture. And the woman had lost her husband. If anybody knows the word of God, you know where I'm going. As a consequence, she had no money in her house. Um, and so her credit failed. And, and she found herself unable to pay her debts. And she was on the verge of losing her sons to slavery. You know the word. And so the man of God, Elisha, had happened upon the woman. Um, and he told her, he said, I want you to take on more debt. And I want you to borrow empty vessels from your neighbors. That's what the scripture said. And the woman believed the man of God. And she went and took out more debt because she believed that through the word of God, through the prophet, that she could get free of her debt. Okay. And so the man of God told her, go into your house in, in a secret place. I want you to shut the door with you and your sons. And I want you to take oil from a container that you have in your house. And I want you to pour the oil into the empty vessels that you borrowed. And she filled every container in her house. And she was able to sell the oil she had poured. And it was enough to pay off all of her debts. Okay, it was enough to pay off all of her debts and then she had enough for her and her children to live the rest of their lives. This woman took one pot of oil and turned it into generational wealth based on the words of one man. And in that story, I saw Natasha Walker in our home. See, some of you saw Natasha's credit services when it was already started and founded. But I remember when Tasha first started in the office at the house. I remember that she would take her time off from Apple. Y'all don't want me to tell the story. And she would take time and fix credit. And, and the, the crazy thing about it is she had to fix hers first to make sure that what she was doing was for somebody else. And so, and so she started off like a woman. She didn't have much, but she had one vessel of oil that God had poured over into her. And then she took that oil and she poured it out. And so she took one, one vial of oil and she quit her job at Apple. And on faith, she stepped out and a lot of people, including me, thought she was crazy. I said, girl, don't you leave that good job and you're gonna go start you a business? And she did it anyway. And then she went back into her secret closet and she poured out another vessel of oil. And then she went and she opened up her office. I don't want me to tell the story. And she would go back in a secret place. And she kept pouring oil out of her vessel into empty vessels. And I saw it and I witnessed it and I realized she's doing an amazing thing. Here's the thing that I love and I know this half of the room is going to go with me. She didn't pour the oil just for herself.
I say to you that she's gone from us today. And it may never make sense to you why you lost your mother. It may never make sense to you why you're losing her right now. But I want you to know that we've been made endure for a night.
while I'm acknowledging, I also wanted to acknowledge the anger that some of us may be feeling. I'm just telling the truth. And I say that to say, this is a peaceful family. They are peacemakers. And the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall obtain peace. So I take it personally when somebody upsets the peace that this family has worked so hard to obtain. So my wife saw me leaving out of the house and she said, you know you can't wear that hat. But some things just have to be said with a hat. Just in respect. Okay? Respect. We don't take it lightly when someone upsets our peace. And now I understand why my grandma and mother, and no matter how old we get, they say, baby, baby this, baby that. And sometimes when we get in our teenage years, we get a little upset, oh, but I ain't no baby. But now that I'm older, I understand what they mean. Because you gotta understand that Natasha and I came into the family at just about the same time. Okay? But she let me and everybody else know that she was number one. <laughs> She's always been number one. And what made her number one was the fact that even if you were number 25, she made you feel like you were number one too. She had that ability to bring you up because she was comfortable in knowing who she was. And the reason that she was comfortable in knowing that she, what she was is because she was loved. From the time she got here, she was loved. Always loved. And she was comfortable in that. Therefore, she didn't mind giving love and showing love. And I had a point in my life where I was really low. And I didn't think I had a friend in the world. And I saw Tasha and, and her mama and Kiana and Tasha said, Uncle Terry, you have always been there for us. She said, and you are loved. But I want you to know that it doesn't mean anything if you don't love yourself. So if she did not teach us anything else, she taught us to love ourselves. And when you love yourself, you can love somebody else. Let me thank God for these speakers. Didn't they do a wonderful job today? I didn't, I didn't have to stand up on one of them because they were saying something, y'all. They were saying something. Thank you so much. This time we have a selection by Gavin and Vaughn. This time.
y'all would bear with me, I missed something with the last things that I read, and this is so beautiful. It's from the Guilford County Sheriff's Office. How beautiful. It says, the Guilford County Sheriff's Office, in loving memory of Mrs. Natasha Yvette Jones Walker, whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to sunset the extraordinary life of our sister, Mrs. Natasha Yvette Walker. The officer and members of Guilford County Sheriff's Office feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family of our dear sister, Natasha Walker, and to join in the celebration of her life. We commend Natasha Yvette to him who knew her best, whereas Natasha Walker demonstrated a great faith in God and an unwavering commitment to her church, her husband, her family, friends, and the community. She lived life as God intended, filled with compassion, love, and hope for all she came in contact with. And then they quote Matthew 5 and 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And this is signed Sheriff Danny Rogers. I think it's what it is. Yes. Thank you so much. Let me take this opportunity to thank um, St. Thomas Chapel and, and uh, ushers and music ministry, amen, and all of you, um, especially to our culinary committee. Let me just say, after this celebration, you're welcome to go to the Fellowship Hall, a family, and if you want to greet friends, if you want to greet them, you may come through and greet them in the Fellowship Hall. Um, the culinary committee has prepared a meal for them. Um, after this service, you may uh, join them if you like. God bless you. Amen. It's time for the word. Amen. Amen. It's time for the word of God. Amen. It's time for the word. I'm going to call him right now and introduce him. Is it okay? Let, let me introduce him first. I'm going to call him the singer. Amen. That's all right. Um, today we have a friend of the family. Yeah. Amen. Elder Bobby Agnew from the St. James Pentecostal Holiness Church in Philadelphia, Virginia. Amen. Who will bring a word from the Lord every time I've heard him? He has a word. He has a word from the Lord. And I believe God has put on his heart something that will bless the church today. And I invite you to listen to him. Amen. As he will come in his own way and deliver the word of God. Such a great man of God. Thank you for coming up and by to share yes. with his family today. And I believe God has a word for us for you today. Amen. Before he comes to us, I'm going to ask him to come twice, twice, right. Treats, thank you, treats, right. I'm sorry. Right will come. Amen. With a soul follow her that she see of the body. Um, this is my friend. Um, Tasha was one of the closest people to me. She made sure my baby boy got a baby shower. Um, so, this is an honor to be able to sing for my girl today.
all the time. May I thank God for this Hunter family. They have been with us and, and with my family in many times of trouble and grief. And they were standing right beside us. And so I want you to know that you are a great friend of the Agnew family. And we love you dearly. And Bishop um, Tyrone Hunter uh, come to our rescue. Many times he preached, uh, eulogized my mother, my sister, and two brothers. And that family has stood, stuck by us. And I'm so grateful to them and I will never uh, forget them. People have been telling me during this time that I know how you feel. I know how you feel about the Hunter family. And so we just want you to know that we love you today. And we, we thank God for this Walker family. Amen. And also I thank uh, the Jones family. And others maybe, um, um, you know, I know I'll miss somebody. Uh, but anyway, we thank God for all of you that uh, is here to give this uh, family amen support in this time of trouble. We are living in a very, very dangerous time. Time that we have never seen before and chances are not even in all history have things been uh, the way they are now. But God will get us through. And I'm dependent upon that. Now I'm not going to try to hold you a long time today. And I'm not going to try to, my purpose is not try to secure uh, an emotional uh, 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 thing today. But we want you to uh, know that we're trying to get this family through this today. Amen. You shout all you want to, but that won't be where I'll be I'm trying to. That's not my purpose. Now, this lady is a woman of God. We need not worry about her. Because Jesus Christ made a way two millennials ago or more for days like this day. And thank God for uh, Sister Latasha that she made preparation. All of us need to know that this day will come to every one of us. And it's time for us, as she has, to make preparations for this particular day. Give you a scary thought. Everyone that's in under the sound of my voice, every one of us, there's something working on the inside of us that will take us out of here one day or the other. So it pays to be read. Now, we want to go to the Word of God today, to the book of Matthew 13, 44 through 46. Matthew 44 through 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Hid in a field, the which when a man have found, he hideth and for joy thereof go and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Again, 
The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls, who when he have found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Holy and eternal God, my Father, as I stand here today, I pray that you will stand here with me. And I ask you, oh God, to help me, O oh God, to speak the words that you would have me to speak. Help me to speak when you speak and to be silent when you're silent. But help us today. Touch this great family, this husband and these beautiful daughters, my father. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch this entire family. Oh God, and that you would walk with them and keep a loving arms around their shoulders and let them know that you have not made a mistake. So go with us and stand by us today and Father, whatever was accomplished, we're going to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory and we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we just read the uh, book of Matthew and Isaiah 45 and 3 gives us this rendition. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. So we'd like to talk to you for a little while today concerning the subject, hidden treasure. Hidden treasure. Most of us have very little appreciation for the darkness. We seem to take things in stride much better in daylight than in the darkness. Yet, Earth's most valuable treasures are found, in, found only in dark places. It's in the deep minds which give us our precious stone. Even coal and oil. Listen, Africa has the richest mines in the world. Yet when the cameras are on them, their main display is their dancing. Little did they know that they were dancing on top of diamond mines. Now look, a dark cloudy night can be very dreadful. But when Jehovah God began to uncover the moon and the stars, then the hidden treasure of light is uncovered. Matthew 4, 16 says, The people which sat in darkness have seen a great light. And to them who sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Sometimes we are so preoccupied and overtaken with stuff until we neglect the true treasure. You have to dig if you want to find treasure. You don't just stumble over treasure. You got to search and then you got to dig. The treasure is as the milk and the breast. As the marble in the bone, as water in the well, or honey is in the honeycomb. You don't just stumble over that. Now, I admit that, and, and regret that I didn't 
uh, Sister Natasha Walker. But I understand she was a friend to many. The bulletin, the, 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 the program speaks well of this great lady. Let me tell you something. A good name goes out yes. before. Yes. And all I've heard is good things about this wonderful lady. She was a, a friend of men. And the Bible says to have friends, you must first show yourself friend. When we were at the funeral home all last night, I saw so many make their way to that funeral home to show support for that family and show love for them. The Bible says that we are to just love one another. But you let me tell you, men just do not recognize a true friend. Come on now, somebody. It's unfortunately that friends become a hidden church. You see, the nature, the true nature of a true friend, in case you don't recognize who your true friends are. Amen. Sister Natasha was a true friend. A true friend is one who when you make a fool out of yourself, don't think that you have made it a permanent job. A true friend is someone who is there when the good times are. A good friend is someone who always gets in the way when you are on your way down. Come on now, somebody. A good friend is someone who comes in when the world walks out. But I have heard many times that Sister Natasha Walker delighted herself in helping others. And when she saw a need, she was ready to get involved. Did you know that is an important Bible gift? It is called the gift of helps. First Corinthians 13 and 28 will tell us. Most of us, when we hear the call on our lives, seem like all we can hear is preach. But God is looking for somebody like this great lady, somebody that is willing to help somebody. And whether you know or not, this world is in a, in a terrible state. And many are looking for some help. Hallelujah. Watch yourself, Pastor. The Bible is replete with those who operated this gift. Uh -huh. That gift will cause you to go out of your way to help others with the act of love and kindness. To give friendship a words of encouragement to a lost soul who need help. Our example is Jesus Christ who went about doing good, having on the disadvantage. You see, this thing about help is something that Bill and everybody don't want to help. 
some people like to see you in trouble. In fact, some folk will give you all the trouble you need. But this is something that was business built in. That's a love for your brother or your sister or your friend. Yes. It is something. It is something that's built in. You know, it just don't come automatic. Right. It's just. It's something like a deer. You ever seen a deer run through the thickets and the woods at Olympic speed and never run into a tree? <laughs> How is that? Well, it's something that's intuitive. Well, what about a blind bat flying through a cave, a dark cave, and never bumps into the wall? It's intuitive. It's something that's inside, it's built inside of us. Yeah. What about the salmon? How do they know at a certain time of the year it's time for them to swim upstream? To make it hot. They don't have books a million. <laughs> The question was asked, what thing 
give up Christ. Uh -huh. Even Jesus asked the, ask the disciples, who do men say that I am? Uh -huh. Well, I hear somebody say, well, uh, some say you're John the Baptist. Uh -huh. And some say you are Elias. And others say that, 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 that you're one of the old prophets of Jeremiah. Uh -huh. But Jesus, I know what they say. tell you something about Jesus just before I sit down. Give me four minutes. <laughs> In his infancy, he saw a king. In his boyhood, he puzzled the doctors. In his manhood, he ruled the elements to find the law of gravity by walking on the wall. Just by his voice, he healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his service. Demons obeyed his voice. When they were trying to, to identify themselves with Christ, Jesus said, shut your mouth. Jesus, his friend, had nothing that he could call his own. He was born in a borrowed state, yeah. rolled on a borrowed beast, preached on a borrowed boat, nailed to another's cross. And when he died, few men mourned his death, and few attended his funeral. Centurion soldiers say, Surely this must be the Son of God. We need to know how to identify those that God has sent to help us. Hallelujah. And I hear somebody else say, If we just had known. If we had just known, if we had just known, we would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Sometimes we have to see further than we can look. Please don't let these treasures Go unrecognized. Isaiah said in the day of Uzziah, I also. Just in the day of Uzziah, what, and he lived in the temple. He ministered in the temple, but he said, when the day, the day that Uzziah died, the king, he said, I also saw the Lord. Natasha, Natasha, rest in peace. We all love you. And we really recognize that you were a friend to us all. We recognize that you finished your assignment. 
So rest in peace now. Amen. Lift that hand to 